Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of the Undefeated Podcast. The only podcast, yeah, with two undefeated fighters, fam. <laughs> Listen, if this is your first time rocking with this podcast right now, welcome. This is a safe space. <laughs> it's the safest space for you. I ain't gonna lie to you. Listen, if you're lie. a hardcore, if you're a hardcore boxing fan or you're a casual, we embrace everybody. You're all welcome. Come, come sit down, enjoy yourself, take a seat. If you're expecting some biased nonsense, you're gonna hear it today. You're in the right place. You're in the right this place. Is the, this is the barber shop, yeah? We don't sit here and pretend to be anything that we're not. No. Nope. Yeah, you don't see us, you don't see us ringside with suits and ties. No. Nope. Oh no. No. Nope. This is the barber shop, bro. That time was I on need the zone. Trim. Well, that I time the, that time <laughs> was on the zone. Did we have trims? Do we have suits on? I had a trim still, but I didn't have a suit, fam. We were wearing suits, bro. Suits? We on the on... Oh, wait. No, we was on the zone. Yeah, we were still. Yeah, yeah, for the AJ fight. I thought suits. you were talking about the other time we was on the zone. No, but we was in suits, though. So does that take yeah. away the thing that we're not the guys on? We, were, we, didn't, we didn't have ties. We didn't have ties. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No ties. <laughs> and Akin Barak, that man had fedoras and that. Like, so yeah, 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 it was yeah, a yeah. very casual setting. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we represented the culture, 100%. But, bro, let's get into it. You need to ask me the real question, fam. Bro, what's your tailor to tape, bro? This come is what on, they want to know. Come on, this week I'm 0 0, fam. Never fought, never lost. If I did, someone gets knocked out. And it's not me. But Lennox, rich. Lennox, be on standby, bro. Listen, because it could, I could be 1 0, bro. I'm telling you, the people have lined up. I've got a lot of trainers. Angel Fernandez is interested in me. He said, you know, I can take you to the top. I said, Angel, I'd rather go with Tony. I'd rather go with base. I'd rather go with people that I feel are more accomplished than you, bro. But um, yeah, um, yeah, I'm not getting with Angel. But tell me, what... Yes. Hello? <laughs> what? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but on a roll, uh, what's your tail of the tape, big man? Bro, look, man. There aren't too many things in this world that are perfect. Mm. But my boxing record is one of them. Come on, you know that. You know what I'm saying? I, I boast a, 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 a deep and successful career of 2-0. and Come on, it's long. You know what I'm saying? With a 50% knockout rate. Oh! Come on, bro. The streets know what that means. Quick maths. Yeah? That mm. means half of the men that enter the ring with me, what they happened? left on their backs. They Let's did. talk about it. So anyway, big man, again, as you said... There's fights lined up, fam. All now, we're still doing the countdown for KSI. Let's just say that fight's not happening. KSI is not... Bro, You've I'm not getting KSI You've been chasing him. Fight. You've been chasing him as long as, what you call it, Special K was chasing Khan, fam. I know, you, I know deep down, I know you're never going to say I just wanted to respect me because I know you're not looking for KSI's respect. Yeah? but I just want the smoke, fam. You just want the bro. smoke. You just want the <laughs> smoke. I I don't know what, what type of personality type that must mean I have here. Because I would just look at man and be like, I want I want the chaos. I want all the chaos, bro. Yeah, man would yeah, be yeah, like, yeah, bro, yeah. What, what's your beef with KSI? There's no, no beef. No beef. I, res I, I respect him highly. <laughs> He's I just, a, he, his career's dope. I respect him. <laughs> I respect him highly. And for that reason is why I want the smoke. <laughs> but yeah, so there's, again, and people have been calling me out, out of my name and that. And Damn. that's why I told, I literally, I went to Twitter and I said, yo, I need a trainer, fam, because this this needs to stop. I don't know what these people want, fam. I'm 20, fam. I'm 20 stones, bruv. Six foot two, fam. The long reach, fam. What are these guys doing, fam? I think they're Jeez. playing on my name, fam. But I'm going to, listen, Some I'll have to be knocking them down, fam. Knocking down that's these cool. cans, fam. And I'll see, keep my name out your mouth. Don't look for me again, fam. Keep my wife's name <laughs> out your mouth. That's what I've got to start saying. That's the new one. Whenever I feel angry, I should say, listen. <laughs> it's the second one, though. It's when he brings it back with the swear word. That's when it's more powerful. But yeah, um, oh, what, a, what a week. Have you been slapped this week, bro? No one slapped me, bro. No? No one, you no know one what? slapped me. It's a we have to ask that to comics worldwide. Yeah, no, you've been slapped. Have you been what slapped happened? this week? You all right? Um, can, you but, can you imagine if this becomes a common thing? Well, comedians just getting slapped mid, mid, mid set. Because, <laughs> you know, after a while, you got to say to yourself, it's like, all right, so no one's going to get their left hand up. <laughs> no, <laughs> no one's just going to start thinking that that needs some practice. It's mad, you know, because I, like, I've got a show, like, and it's proper one. 
that big Ori in that. He was talking about the 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 black shows, yeah. Because I know people are very surprised by someone getting me to at a show, but this is a new. <laughs> I want people to know that Will Smith is not the first person, yeah. He ain't the first comic to have been <laughs> dealt with. That's that's had a, a tense moment like this. This is just bro. like what can happen at a black comedy event if you're doing bro, way bro, too much. That- Bro, listen, as much as we, our experiences are like black comedy shows back in those days. Yeah. Bro, it happens everywhere. Swear. I've seen videos where man get, a man will ambush the stage and the Bruh. comic has to hit, has to try and hit and really fight his way yeah, through. Yeah, I've seen the comic use the uh, mic stand. What are we talking about? I've seen the comic get busy sometimes. So, but I didn't know that. So, I didn't know that it was getting, I'm just saying, what the oh, show's bro, Manchester done. Comedy Store, fam. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the video, this brother got into a scrap scrap, as in, Listen, it's everywhere. Hey, uh, you know what's crazy about doing comedy and fighting? Because they don't go together. They, they they don't go together. You have to really flip Man. your mind into I'm fighting now. And it's, it's look, <laughs> talk to me. Let's look at that moment here yeah, and how left it could have gone with Linda Laffer fan. <laughs> what one? Bro, Linda Laffer, IFL TV, me and him and we're chatting. Jesus. If Lyndon Arthur wasn't in good vibes and I caught him on the worst day oh. and I'm on some, yeah, Yard is going to... Bro, that, I could have been the first one. I could have been first. <laughs> then I will be talking about what happened to Chris Rock whilst bringing up my highlights to say comedians are out of control. <laughs> you know what's crazy? I was actually thinking about this before, yeah. The maddest thing. You know when your mood changes and comedians with the mood changes absolutely... It's wild. I remember doing a show. It was a it was a gospel event as well, but someone stole my wallet. And I knew that they were still there with my wallet. And I knew I was at church. I was so frustrated. Bro, <laughs> I, was at, I was at a show in Nottingham. Someone said, could stole God's, my wallet. Could God's people please line up one by one for the strip search? <laughs> I was so angry, bro. But I still had to get into this. I had to get into this 25, bro. I was so... <laughs> I was thinking, and why they're laughing? I'm thinking, someone here's got my wallet. You bro. know when you're like, bro, listen. And I wanted to punch somebody that day. I could have slapped somebody. <laughs> but yeah, um, anyway, big up to big up to Chris Rock, big up to Will Smith. Them lot will sort it out in the future, hopefully. But yeah, It'll let's um it's mad because that's a picture that's gonna be used for memes for the rest of for the rest of life. Like a box is gonna get knocked out and they're gonna use it'll say the box's Rock's- name. <laughs> It like Tyson Fury used it today before he the fight. It. He put Dillian's face on there. Don't you think that's a bit weird using it before the fight though? Like, shouldn't you? It's an after the Wait. fight moment, surely. Thing is, what? What? Well, it's it's a meme, isn't it? You know, Tyson Fury is still trying to get a reaction out of Dillian White. Yeah. So it's super technical. I mean, when you look at that situation, Segway King. When you look at that situation now, <laughs> <laughs> you saw that. You saw I'll, that. I'm looking at it, and I'm, I, I'll be honest, people are going to hear this and think, you know, we had a couple guys on the, on the chat on Monday yeah. talking about, oh, you just don't like Frank Warren, you don't respect Frank Warren. But I look at this and I'm like, no, but it's quite clear that when people say Frank's usually involved in bad business, yeah. this time around, in this era where everything is public and available to consume and see, fam, it's 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 another display of bad business that Frank's involved in. Yeah, um... And that was, you know, it's funny because you can tell panic from Frank. If everything was going well, I don't think they sound like the way they sound. Are you with me? There's just a bit of panic. That that was all I got from the, you're not that riled up if you don't need this other person. Are you with me? You're not as, you're like, you're like, you know, whatever. You you know what I'm saying? He doesn't want to do it, fine. Like you, mm. there could be shows that you're booked for. And you don't, you don't put the flyer out. You don't promote. You That's don't right. do. And they know deep down this show's big. It's good to have you there, but this show's yeah. gonna be big regardless. People are. It's coming. gonna be fine. It's, it's gonna, yeah, gonna exactly. be fine. The show's going to fill out. I would like you to retweet it, but the show's gonna work. You know what I mean? Now with with Frank, we're getting. He feels unhinged in some in some interviews when he's talking about Dilly, and he's like. And I, I maybe is it a thing that is it because the power dynamic is shifted and he's never been in this position before, or is it ticket? Is it related to ticket sales? Yeah, are you with me? Because sometimes boxers have more power than they've ever had before with a promoter. Are you with yeah. me? 
yeah, is yeah, that yeah. is it like this is a new part of ground for him where it's like I can't believe this boxer's treating this situation like this when it never used to go like this or is it literally what I think is it's a combination of things it's, it's definitely one of those like you say where it's like you gotta look at a fighter and be like why do I have to take this from you yeah you know what I'm saying? Remember, Frank would have come from that era of being absolute, I've got all the control. Yeah. And now you've got this fighter who don't even want to show up to your press conference. Like, he's he's absolutely not respecting your, your thing right now. Yes. So he's got that going on. But I reckon there's a panic because he's probably looking at the forecast in terms of pay-per-view projections. Yes. And it's like, this ain't really building up. Look how quiet the promo is for the fight right now. And we're less than three, we're less than a month out. We're getting close. We're getting close. We said, th- we said this about Wilder and Fury, yeah? And everyone was like, no, nah, but it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's like, no. It wasn't even sold out. It wasn't what, Wilder, sold out. Wilder Fury? Uh, Wilder Fury, the second one. Really? And the third one. The third one wasn't sold out. It was a great fight, and people were gassed on it, but it weren't sold out. Yeah, it just feels like, sis, it feels like people may lose money in this one. Bro. And remember my theory on the whole, well, my theory based on a lot of people have been saying that about how per splits can work in terms of me saying to you, yo, you're going to hold 15, but I'm going to make sure we secure the win on the per splits. Mm-hmm. So if he's done that, it could be that Fury is getting just, he's getting more than what Dillian's getting. Of course. But not not the landslide de- deficit that, you know, has been advertised to us. Yeah. So that means Frank knows that their P's are closer than it seems, regardless of the 80-20 talk. So now he's looking at him thinking, you're not even getting 20%. You're getting way more than 20%. Yeah. And you're just keeping this nonsense going. That's what that that, that frustration feels like to me. I don't know. So then when we go into this, yeah, so if that's the case, because there's rumours of um, Fury from his mouth, he could potentially retire after this one. And it feels like that's in the air. Do you feel that he's going to want one more big money fight? Because it don't feel like the check is coming after this one. You know, he the, the AJ fight was always a fight that he's looked at forever. Mm. Do you believe that that's the real cash out? Because all these fighters have to cash out at some point. Yeah. They, they're yeah. going to do that fight, which just makes financial sense. We're getting, we're getting the same with um, Warrington versus, what's that kid's name? Manchester City. Um Lee Wood. Wood. Yeah, that's the that's the big payment fight, isn't it? That's a mm. you know, that's two city two cities coming together. It's a derby money, big money, fill up, fill up the arena. That's what they're gonna fill up the Man City Stadium, whatever. Like it's never really been full, like in football terms. But anyway, we leave that alone. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> but that's gonna that will fill that up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's there's those fights, and I know Fury's always had his eye on AJ because let's be honest. Even till today, that's still one of the biggest fights that the whole world wants to see. We want to know how that one goes because we always paired these two off together. So I'm saying, you know what I mean? So could he really walk away? Yeah, without taking it, especially if this this fight's the game, the way it's gonna go. And I don't feel this fight's gonna do a lot for Fury's career, just because of how um, quiet Dylan's been. Like for mm. the boxing, for the kind of boxing guys, I don't. This hasn't captured the hearts of the casuals. This yeah. fight here, it's not because we haven't spoken to the casuals. Are you with me? Nah, so nah, that's true. It, it, it's cool, but he will need to do something else. I believe. I don't think he walks away on this one. What are you saying? He can't walk away on this one. If he does, like this idea that he goes out as as anything like spectacular in regards to what history is going to look back on. Because let's be real, you got it takes some career to make people talk less and less about Muhammad Ali or a Lennox Lewis or a, a Holyfield or a Mike Ty. It may, you're going to have to do a lot. He's yeah. not done enough. They'll say, yeah, no, he was dope and maybe he could have, but he didn't. And mm. and sadly, like, and I'm, and I'm seeing people say that, like, a couple, like big fighters are saying this. It's like, no, nah, it's not enough to retire, fam. Crawford um, did his pound for pound list. Didn't have Fury on there. It, yeah, like, well, I understand that. Yeah, that's crazy, and that's and you won't be on those type of lists. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know why Fury would ever be on a, on a pound for pound list. Fighting Wilder three times and the Klitschko win, bro. These are two men. 
Pound Dillian, for pound, Dillian, it's Dillian, it's Dillian plus somebody else, and then you're on the pound for pound list. Dillian well, plus somebody the, else. Thing is, it's, it's harder for a heavyweight to get on the pound for pound list in general. Like, well, it, they, because, you put them on there because of what amazing stuff yeah, they've because, done in the heavyweight because they don't change but weights in it. But right? if you, but if you look at what um, pound for pound means in theory, is that yeah. if this guy was at another weight class, he He'll would be, be him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you got guys like Terence Crawford, who's he's undisputed at one weight class. He's gone up. He's a champion. Yeah. Potentially going to be undisputed if he gets that fight. Canelo, Canelo undisputed pound, at pound. middle. He's climbing up to light heavy. Yeah. He's doing. He was at one four seven doing a madness, bro. Yeah. You those are the guys you got to get into the mix. So for you to do it as a heavyweight, you have to smoke, smoke everybody everyone. in yeah. your era. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One hundred percent. We so had, I feel like we had Pacquiao as well. That was in the pound for pound list as well. It makes sense. Easy. It makes sense, but. Easy. It's mad. I'm. I'm it, I know Fury, and it's funny listening to Sugar Hill. Sugar Hill's like Fury's just chatting. No one believes yeah. him, so I believe him now. And I thought, you know what? You know your fighter. He He's knows that his fighter can wake up today and say this, then say this, and another day. It's Fury. I think that them two have built up their relationship. They built up their bond. I actually like their relationship. You know, it's one it's that so, it, it's yin and yang. Yeah, you it's so unexpected. You look at them and you think, raw, like, this works. And you mean, yeah, like it really does. You know, like I'm I'm a big fan of of them too. This is this this is gonna be like I hope Dillian versus Fury is gonna happen. Every, my 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 head says they're gonna pull out, someone's gonna pull out and it's gonna be cancelled or it's gonna be postponed for a fake reason. That's what yeah. my from my, mainly Warren's side. I think mainly Warren's side. I can see Warren doing it in, in, a, in an act of emotion. Not emotion. I think it's, emotion, it's, it's always going to be business. It's going to be financial. It will never be yeah, emotion no, to make right. a decision right, like right. that. I think it'll be a financial decision where it's like, they look at, and we've seen tours canceled before. We've seen like rappers, singers cancel their tours and just mm -hmm. create a reason. You know, and I think that it might be one of those unless these tickets really go. Wherever these tickets are, be, are claimed to be sold at, as long as they just go. But mm. some work has to be done. I think maybe if it maybe if it pops off at the weigh-in. Yeah. And that's still that's still kind of that's still kind of that's still kind of too close because that's gonna have the weigh-in the, the day weigh before. I know, but it, what, how many tickets did you sell a day before? Well, this, at this point, if the stadium is sold out, quote unquote, as they've been saying, yeah, and not sold to Ticketmaster, as the lawyer said, right, then they got nothing to worry about in regards to ticket sales. At that point, it's just pay per view, and a weigh in a couple of days before the fight can no a weigh in you know I mean? a day before. Well, sorry, the fight. no, sorry, the press conference and the weigh in in the same week. But like he might not week. come to it. He might not come to the press conference Friday week. I mean, if fight week is the mad explosion that it could be to make the fight go mad, you can see the interest climb. Because then there's, like, there's obviously us, man, hardcore. Yes. But then you've got men who are like, I pay for the fights I like. Yeah. And it takes one big moment to capture your imagination. And I hear that. But what if I don't? I'm not, again, in the contract, it doesn't say I have to be at the final press conference. I didn't go to the first one. Yeah. There's no plane taking me there. Yeah, and the lawyers was uh, the lawyer just the other day was called a liar. Yeah, you're a liar. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, but you're a liar. <laughs> I said, raw. Is that not Frank with a double R tantra? <laughs> but <laughs> see, he was called a liar. Yeah, chance. It, what it tells me is these two camps have upset each other to a point where they might not want to. They might not want to do the necessaries to get business done. Like there should be a plane that brings Dillian back to, back to the UK from Portugal. Yeah. There should be all those things set up. If that, if Dillian flies himself into, into, I don't know, into London. He ain't going. He ain't going. He might he, even do a flipping Instagram story just to show he's literally in the country. I'm but in the not country, there. but I'm not there. And it, again, it's, oh, it's the most frustrating but, thing. But let's be real though, if it gets to that stage, the fight is going ahead. If he can get to, if the timeline is we're in a couple of days out, I'm not coming, but I'll see you Saturday. 
oh, I'll see you at the weigh-in. Because the weigh-in, they're going to be face-to-face. And my theory, if Dillian goes at the weigh-in and shoves Tyson Fury, like, really, like, don't strike him, because obviously that could j- jeopardize the fight, but he does something, roughs man up, gets out of there. Oh, my gosh, he's played a blinder. In my, because I've that's been, always been the way I said to do it. Yeah. So if silence, he plays it like silence. that, I'm going to be watching, like, let's see if I'm right. Silence, <laughs> silence. A massive shove that you you come off the best in. Yes, you gotta come out good. He can't come off soft. He's gotta absolutely do something that up ab- like embarrasses Fury more so than hurts him. It's it, it's definitely the one thing I why I say it's happening is Big Baby Miller's there. Big Baby Miller's um helping spa. Um, it's wild Fury. that he's in the camp. No, it makes sense. I'm talking about just the the height the height difference. And stuff yeah, like that, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and maybe some of the approach, Big Baby, um, Dillian would. I'm not saying he's close to Big Baby, but some of the the hugging, some of the using of the weight, some of just what Big, just what D- Dillian would do, some type of things that Big Baby might do, just some yeah. of it, just some of it. So I understand it, and it's like dealing with that where you know when a fighter becomes awkward to get rid of or hard to deal with, or again. If he can recreate or show some of that but, style, but Big it's Baby a smart... Miller is not that skillful. Is like how, on, how skillful is Dillian on... though? I won't say Dillian's got major skill. Nah, Dillian is. Would you say he's got major? Not... Would you would you put him up there with no, with one no, of the most not... skillful heavyweights in the in the division? You could say that he's not super skillful, absolutely. Yeah. But what I'm more alluding to is the levels. Of course, I wouldn't there's, say there's Big Baby Miller and Dillian are the same level. Definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, not. Definitely not. Definitely not. I'm saying. just talking about probably in the height difference and some of the um, some of the just I'll call it ring body, craft or just the body type. yeah body type and just things that you might have to deal with. Even that thing of getting him off you so you can go again as well. That stuff because I think that's the kind of stuff you would work on with a Big Baby Miller. He's obviously gonna have um, Parkers always with him in it. So, Park, and we, Park is always going to be there. I actually don't like that, you know, that Why? partnership. Unless it's your family. It's his yeah? friend. I hear that. Unless it's your family, right? And the reason why I say family is I would never call for Vladimir to fight Vitaly. Never. Not, at no point would I ever suggest it or even want to see it in my imagination. Your brothers. Yeah. But when you're friends, I don't look at it like that way. It's like, Nah, you could still might have to top head top this brother one day because he has the thing that your Didn't whole Parker career's been about. That? Didn't Parker say that he's yeah. never going to fight him though? That's exactly what my problem is with Parker. Like, I don't like when your 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 nice guy energy means that you now hinder yourself. Because let's say Fury unifies and doesn't want to retire. What are you fighting for? Nah, because I think Parker's <laughs> banking on the fact that he he he's got behind the curtain. He knows Fury's not here for a long time. Yeah, but this that's is, what I'm but saying. What I'm so saying I is, can I can just be your friend and stay away from you. Belly, just, Belly told us he'll never fight AJ. This is Bridget. Yeah, but when that, Belly that, was that, trying to operate as a heavyweight at one stage, and he was happy to fight Fury. But this was a long. I hear that, but Belly's heavyweight campaign wasn't really a campaign. He was it wasn't looking a long at like, one. I'll, I'll do one because I'm still I'm knocking on the door. You understand? I don't know. I think if you say you're, you're willing to fight Fury, but not AJ, that's still kind of wild to me. Like, you can't pick and choose your heavyweights that you're going to get in the ring with. So he done friendship and then he well, said, way, you know yeah. what? I know but you don't Tony, like it. Tony, but... Tony Belly's not a real heavyweight. Yeah, like that. that's that's true. So you can you might get so lost. It's, it's a little different when we talk like that. But if, if this is the campaign that I live in, yeah, yeah, and you're in there, bro, at some point, look at what's he and Richards fam. Yeah. You'd never believe these men are friends with the way they, they the way they yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. each other now. Now it's very much like, yeah, you know, we're cool, we're from the same place and da da but business is business. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. it comes. Even Dan Aziz and Yard and all these guys, they're all friends. But after Dan Aziz's fight, I want Yard. Like, let's go in it. Like, he's on it, fam. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. for me, I like that part of a of a man of a com- a competitive energy. Do you know what I mean Parker is a really nice guy? I met him at the the after the Trezor Park. He's in the same hotel. It was bare weird. Yeah. Walked out to the lift. Him and Andy Lee. I was like, Swear. Oh, Rob, <laughs> Rob, boys. <laughs> you know, you got to go in your head. Rob, I've done never said anything. Ah, oh, oh, I didn't cool. even do all that, fam. Man, <laughs> you know, it was when you greet someone and they come in for a hug. I was like, Rob, okay, <laughs> yes, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> He's a proper nice guy. But I just think for me, the nice guy thing, I want, I want it to be a cap on the nice guy thing. Mm. that's all that's all like that bro me and you backstage at the show 
bro. When we get out of there, obviously we're gonna battle each other. It's cool. Yeah, pricks. When we got under the lights, Total smoke, pricks. smoke settings. Total pricks. <laughs> Telling you, and then after the show, it's yeah, bro. You yeah. Did a madness. When you came at me like that, I didn't know where I was gonna go. Like it's just that's it. That's what I like. That was horrible, you know. That was wild. That was the wildest. You still the wildest <laughs> moment, fam. Oh, wait, it's hilarious, wait, bro. Hold on, who's saying? Nobody would you. ever understand it that that's you. how we were was, backstage. Was, nah, and we were nah, it, was, it, was, it was me. It was me. It was I you said, that so. said it, and I was like, raw. <laughs> Okay, I, bro. <laughs> I, I remember you guys. You were taking a jab and saying, oh, "I'm in a fight." <laughs> it's bro. It's it's when you went. I said something. The crowd went nuts. He just went, oh, "Okay, very good, very good, very good." <laughs> That's what I knew. He's coming back. I said, "Okay, cool." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, have we started the pod by then? We're just <laughs> we're just friends. Or we just we just friends. 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 From radio. This was after radio. In between. Hey, hey, and now I'm at your wedding, fam. That's fantastic, <laughs> bruv. I made it, bruv. Um, <laughs> I made it, bruv. You know, hey, life is funny. One thing I'll tell you, look, life is very entertaining. Life is very funny. You do not know what is going to happen. Like, if we just, even for people, again, little small history lesson, small little memory lane and that. Um, me and Travis, yeah, he, he's got it in his comedy, but... I think our greatest day was when <laughs> me and Travis, Travis was Nelson Mandela and I thought I was Malcolm X. And at, like, I saw a video of us, me and Travis, we went to a march and became leaders <laughs> at the march. And it was very epic. It was so epic to the point that- It's one of like, those days where you feel like you're in a movie. I feel like I'm in a movie about a different time. <laughs> it's just- Wait, it's but insane. what's funny, yeah? yeah? What's funny to me is that, like, obviously people know us from the pod, but they don't realise how far back the story goes. Yeah. Like, in regards to us, like, working together on radio. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it goes back. It goes, it goes, <laughs> it goes back. And no, and I think the real life experiences, though, about I've that's what I say, I've experienced the maddest things with Travis. So it's so real true. funny. Now that we do this, it is really <laughs> funny. We have little nights or there's... There's moments I kind of go back and I look at the highlights. So if I look at our highlight rule, I'm like, okay, the march. Then I think of the first, um, the first undefeated thing that we did, the live show. Yeah, the yeah, The first yeah, yeah. one, I think of um, Lennox as Vegas. another one. Vegas yeah. another one. I think of, I think of the show with Spencer. That was the maddest oh, of all pods we've done. One, the first one. The, of all pods we've done, the Spencer Fioron pod was was the maddest. That was like oh, go back and watch that if you haven't seen it. That's that's only, that's literally probably the only time where we've been in the presence of a boxer and I thought that something could kick off in the room. <laughs> and the whole time that these him and Spencer are going back and forth, I'm thinking to myself, surely this can't escalate. Surely not. <laughs> He was, was close to escalation, bro. Sitting there. I was sitting there in my seat like Chris Rock, just like... <laughs> Only for Spencer at the end to be like, nah, I'm just playing with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. There's a part in the video, yeah, at, at, in that interview, where at the end of all the arguing and back and forth that they men are doing, because I'm now thinking, ah, right, i got to speak up a bit more just to try and defuse mm. this thing and try and lighten it. And he leads it to my head and he goes, I'm just messing with him. So now I'm like, uh, <laughs> I just got to let this thing continue. <laughs> and I'm getting hot. But I'm like, oh. I need to be professional. So it just makes me laugh, the journey of this pod. So for all the people that are watching, there's episodes that I'll definitely say to definitely go and watch. I will say... Definitely go and watch the Spencer one, the yeah. Lennox one for people that are new to us because some people would have just picked up after the React pool, after a watch along. Yeah. The Tunde Ajayi interview. Tunde Ajayi interview is, is special. Um, There's an interview where Lyndon Arthur has just fought Yard the first time and he phoned in on our pod. Yes. <laughs> that was a mad one. There you go. But yeah, I remember that's... the very first watch along. I think it was a Chris Ebeck Julian the girl fight. It's horrible. And I think this. The brother from uh someone phoned him from Plymouth. Hello, my boy. He was he was so upset. <laughs> he 
He's he got an Olympic medal, man. How could he lose, man? Oh, my... Oh, I'm Come so on, boy. mad. <laughs> sorry. Oh, just had to... Sorry, I, we had to do that, though. We had to take you down memory lane and stuff. And then I would say, the day that solidified it for me with, with Travis, when I knew that we could argue on any matter, is the... Um, is the Wilder Fury argument we had oh, in Vegas. So after maybe. that, I said, we'll recover from anything. If you lot think I'm down on a scorecard or he's down on a scorecard, I will continue fighting. It's, Listen, it, we'll be fine. We went to... We, uh, that, and that wasn't even on the pod. We yeah. finished the pod and the debate just continued. I yeah. was so angry, I walked out into the street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I walked out into the yeah. street. I needed air, bro. Yeah. I don't... We spoke on the plane ride, but it was... <laughs> Nuts. It was a bit nuts. Anyway, um, let's see, to, to get back into things though, to get back into like rivalry. Oh, go on. Go on. No, go on, go on. Yeah, I was gonna say to get back into things and get back into rivalries or just where things started, we had the ghost on our show early. Yeah. We had the ghost on our show early, the ghost being Dion Juma. Um, and he he had a big he had a he had a target set for um Lawrence Acoli. Unfortunately, yeah. His, it's just, it didn't go his way. He fought React Paul. React Paul would have been a major fight for him to reintroduce himself to the cruiserweight division, I would say. And yeah. it, I think it would have, it would have just, not like Lawrence would have to pay pay attention. Lawrence would have just had to shown some level of awareness that he's now, he's now around. Swimming in the waters, not where you are, but he's around, isn't it? Um, yeah. It didn't go his way. You know what I mean? On that day, um, a stiff was that a jab to the was that a jab lip? Like, nah, it's a big, it's a right hand, a right, right hand. No, I think it, it was less about the power of that shot and more about the accuracy. Like, and I don't know if it's necessarily deliberate, but it landed where no fighter was, wants to be hit. Mm. He caught him on the on the liver. That's the shot. That that is the. Whenever you see fighters fall down and they roll on the floor and they do what, bro, that's. Because the liver shot. And you there's no you can't train your liver for it. You receive. can't toughen up that bit. There's, you can't tough it's it's that little bit that's in between your lap muscle and your abs. Yeah. And there's that little soft little bit that's it's just cocooned in between the muscle, bro. If yeah. you can get hit that shot there, it's over. It's over. It's over. If you can find a liver shot on the road, oh goodness. <laughs> now nah, anyone that hits you in your liver on your road, yeah. You're you not be fighting, fighting properly, you know, and you're not fighting properly. That's got to be a yeah. kick to the liver. You got a kick to the liver, and you're on the floor. That's the only way I can understand a shot it's like nuts. that working. Because I don't know who's how. <laughs> what is this Tekken? Are you bored? No, 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 no. You know your character I'm... goes rolling as well in that Tekken game. Well. Go but when you see Canelo perfect that left hook to the body. Mm. Understand that's by design, fam. Because it, it's not obviously it's not the right shot, the right to the body is just it's gonna hurt, but you're gonna be all right. But that left to the body, right on your right side, that lands. Yeah, goodness. Call the paramedics. Call the immediately. I think what was nice though was there was a there was a lot of respect shown from both fighters towards each other. Yeah, I thought that that was the surprising thing. You know, even um, Jumo put up a post, and I think they gained respect for each other just sharing a ring with each other. I think, and I thought. I like that. I said, you know, that's yeah. a good way for that one to settle. Hey, you know, you know what it does, yeah. When yeah. you see the when you see the fighter give it up like that, <laughs> it's gonna sound so nuts, yeah. Because I don't see myself as any involvement in boxing. I see myself as as a fan and a fan only, yeah. Yeah. When you see that, because obviously I, I'm rooting for Juma, yeah. But when you see him give that respect, it makes you. It almost unlocks your ability to respect Say, him now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, you did your thing still. That's the word. That's the word. Because yeah. it's not like true, like mad love. It's like, okay, you did your thing still. You know, it's not like it's almost begrudgingly in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, like, yeah. Mm, yeah. And that's and that was for me, like, because deep down, yeah, I wanted, um, I wanted Juma to do it just to see what happens next. I wanted Same. to see him because he's saying the Cody for time is getting shown up at the Cody's gym, doing the most. Now that now that it was gone, now that moments like. The moment, the moment does feel like it's gone, yeah? Only because... And the thing is, I feel sorry for, for Juma in this situation because there was a period of inactivity in his career because of another injury. Yeah. Right? I think that's more of a condition than an injury. And now, the two years out the ring, um, different eye surgeries, that 
put him back. Whereas if he fought Riyadpur two years ago, no doubts in my mind he gets him out of here. I don't, maybe not knock out, but he wins. But it's like, he's just unlucky. Just unlucky. But now you, you talk about what's next for Riyadpur. Do you reckon a, a few more fights before he starts hunting a Coley or? Yeah, I think so. How many, and like, how many to, fights? Like Tony, you... um, well, I mean, Tony said last night, I call his levels above him. Yeah. And I agree. Do you know what I mean? I don't look at React Paul and think, yeah, you could catch a Coley. Bro, you ain't catching a Coley with nothing. A Coley, if he don't catch you and you're a threat, he's turned this into a snooze fest and win on points. He okay. has the ability yeah, the to ability. just to ruin the fight for you and win. And with a better so for trainer me, as well. With a better trainer. And not just that, but a Coley does have more to his game. Like... When we see Akoli relaxed and loose and you can tell his mind is in the right place, yeah, he can he can do other things in the ring. He yes. can really move. His arsenal is he's actually got more in there. It's yeah. when he shuts down and he relies on being a one hit guy and just smothers you with the clinches. Yeah. Either way, those are both ways he can win. Yeah. Whereas Reactor, if he don't catch you, if he didn't catch Juma, he was losing the rounds. Mm. You had a moment where you knocked him down, dope. Got up after that, and he was able to survive the round and get back into the fight. And then you caught him with a body shot after a good round from Juma. That round before he got caught with a body shot, I said, "Raw, he might just shut out the fight. Like, he just win this thing on points. Got caught. There's a reason why power is so respected, fam. <laughs> Man can't talk down on power. At all. Right. But that boxing needs needs to improve. That's that's literally how it feels for me, because Akoli will box rings around him and then knock him out. You know what? It's so funny. Like I, I would say that I like to see them. I like to see them in the ring together. React Paul, give him. I want react two to three fights from now. I don't want a Coley to go up before he fights React Paul. I just want to see. I think he will. I think yeah. he will. Oh, they're not going to meet. Well, not in cruiserweight. I reckon if he waits that long, he won't meet him. It's a he shame. Has to, he has to gamble. Roll the dice. One fight and and then go for him. It's a shame because the cruiserweight division just feels like. A division that's just not like alive. Not much going on. Uh, it's not alive, and I feel like even by the time Macaulay was ready, or he's not not even ready yet, even though he's like a champ, even though he's a world champ, like Usyk's gone. You know what I mean? I feel like it needs a few of them in there just to make it exciting. It, it just it's just over really quickly. I, I would, and that's probably selfishly just because I would like the cute uh, um the cruiserweight division. To be a division that we think about again, or it's yeah, it it is. We're getting more joy watching featherweights, bro. Like yeah, it, it's and that's mad. the thing, man. It is quite annoying because like the cruiserweight division could be a dope one where it's like you got guys who are heavyweight sized ish who move a bit better. Yeah, and you could, there's a room for a lot of explosive characters. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Babbage, right. uh, Babbage for me could be go a, down, bro. Could be could go down. Um, Wilder, we know he struggles with the. We know Wilder Bridge, struggles. It's more, it's more bridge weight for Wilder though. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But the thing is, there's more excitement on the conversation of Akoli going up because I think Akoli going up. You know, we see less snooze fests because he knows I'm not the bigger man to just wrap you up and that's it. He'll go up to heavyweight and remember that sparring video we saw of Akoli and Dillian White years mm. ago, and Akoli looked good. Yeah, and I was looking at that thinking, "All right, you got more in the tank. Like you got more you can do in the ring that you just don't do. How comes?" Yeah, in heavyweight he'd have to. But you know he wouldn't be able and to he can give bang. you. He wouldn't be able to give you what David Hay done though. If no, like, no, it won't. It won't look like that. It won't it's look different... like it will look. Yeah, it's he's a different. He's a different guy. I don't know what guy. it'll look like. I think he'll still be patient. I think he still won't be able to become that guy that goes for it. Like goes in there and says, "You know what? I'm small at this weight, so." I have to do this to get done how Hay was getting it done. I but feel like he'd... his his body is more designed for heavyweight than say a David Hay. Okay, David Hay used his tools, yeah, to get to heavyweight and exist there. Bear in mind, he, you'd never see David Hay in the clinch, yeah, digging, tucking to the body and yeah, shoving yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. He weren't doing that. He's yeah, like, yeah. no, I know I'm smaller than you guys. Explosive. It's fine, but you're not catching me. But when I catch you, it's over. Lights out. So yeah. his style was elusive, weight, patient. Bang! Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Akoli is gonna have to be the bigger guy in a lot of guys because there's still bare men are smaller. He's like what six 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 five. I don't know. And he's he's t- once he henches up 
at that weight, he's gonna be. You're gonna look at him and think you should have been heavyweight this whole time. Just move, uh, again, moving things on. Um, it, it's not it's not a sad end to a relationship because I think this is the most diplomatic ending. Um, the Haney, not Haney. I mean, the Mayweather Javante Javante relationship. Yeah, it's, it's that's quite. Not, I think it's been considering how things can go and how we know um, how we know Mayweather to be. Yeah, yeah. For him to say nothing lasts forever. I'll always love Tank. He has to do what's best for him. I feel like I've done great. I've done a great yeah. job thus far, building up to put him in a great fight. I'm proud of him. That yeah. is the most diplomatic, yeah, a relationship breakdown I've ever heard. You know? It's an um, interesting one. And then we got, yeah. this is the, the last thing I got from Javonta as well. He says, um, it's about his next fight. Um, that's it. My contract's up. That's why they want me to fight this clown so bad. That's <laughs> that's all, that's all he's really giving us. I can't really work out what that situation is at this point. Like, for me, I look at it and I'm like, well, I'm glad only because that it opens him up for more fights now. Do you know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm curious to see what his intentions are for boxing because it's like, do you want to fight the number one guys and start to? really, really get there with the killers and get them out of here? Or are you kind of content just doing the things you do and have always done? Mm. Because where you yet to really see Tank match up with someone and be like, it's a 50-50 fight, man. I don't know if he can do this one. Never. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we'll see. I'm curious to see what the next stage of his career looks like. Do you know what I mean? Floyd should not have been it. He shouldn't have done whatever he's done to let Tank go. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it is what it is, boy. It's 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 a, it's this is a confusing one. This is one of them situations where I wish I knew more. He even tweeted the other days. Um, this is not to anyone as well, which is, I thought was really crazy. Um, he goes, wait, let me read this. Whenever you see me, have the same energy. Dot dot dot. It's in you. Bring it out. Hashtag the one. Like I don't know what's his messages are very there's cryptic. Cryptic. It's like. What the hell's something is something's happened, yeah. Mm. Something has to have happened in this situation. I just can't tell who, like, I, I can't put my money on it. And you saw Mayweather being a, a major voice within the corner of him, so it it just feels yeah. weird. This feels weird, or is it literally just <laughs> I weren't resigning? I wasn't gonna resign. How did this? Let's, how does this happen? We're gonna have to let part. We're gonna have to let this one develop as more information goes on. Because one thing we do know about Floyd and his business arrangements, yeah. Sad, sadly, sometimes they can mess badly in public. So you know, if Tank is feeling away, I can't imagine he's gonna keep quiet. So we'll see. I think, him it, and 50, yeah, him and Fifty were dogs. Yeah, <laughs> that went nuts. I think. It's even worse. Sometimes in these situations when people are being this nice, mm. boy, it's, uh, it's bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, you know exactly. sometimes you're like, nah, this is so nice from Floyd, then really cryptic from you. Some, yeah. Something has happened. Something has gone wrong. We'll probably hear about it at the end of that fight, however mm. that one goes. So, that, yeah. Uh, at the Barclays, yeah, that's when we'll hear about it. Moving on, though, you've got... Um, Haney versus Cambosis as well. Just just before we get to that one, yeah. On. Uh, Eubank and Kelbrook negotiations are are heat. Uh, well, I say heating up. They're probably cooling down. Eubank has basically been saying that look, I can get to one fifty eight. Anything more than that is not happening. That did, he said he come to catch weight. He said that he should he should come to a. That was fine. Yeah. That's what I think. Um, didn't Kelbrook say that he wanted him? What what did? did well, Eubank wanted it at 160 because he said, bruv, you, you came up to fight Golovkin at 160. Yeah. Like, you, you walk around heavier than me now. Yeah. So you can do that. But Kyle Brook had, had a request. Kyle Brook had a request, right? Saying he said 155 on Twitter. But I know they've been negotiating and Eubank has just basically come back and said, look, I can do 158. Outside of that, it's not happening. And realistically, I don't think he can go further than that. I don't think he's just chatting crap. If yeah. you look how lean Eubank is, where are you taking that weight from? Very lean. Very lean. <laughs> Do you know 
you know what I mean? So the fur jacket, if he takes that off, you I'm taking a piss. Drop the boots. <laughs> Drop the boots and the fur jacket. You're good to go. Now, um, I and I honestly, even in that fight, I know you still have it um very much so you bank. I'm getting all the way with special K on this one again. You think so? I'm getting with special K. I thought, nah. I I he's gonna win it. Special K wins this one. I nah, I just I know it. That. I if, just if Special K it. proves me wrong on this. I just know it. Well, the oh, Special K is for me. If I'm, I I'll, get just the, I'll get the serial win. No, no, no. I just know it. I feel like. I feel like. It's not complete yet. The job that the the person the fighter that Eubanks trying to be, he he ain't Roy Jones. He ain't become the Roy Jones 2.0 that I know he wants to be. He's not that yet. And we're and we're definitely, without a doubt, that is the road we're going down. That's who we're trying to develop and turn into. Now, if fighting, if if um Kel Brook is your next fight and Kel Brook is in the best shape or best form of his life, he's a problem. Mm. If we get the if we get the Kel Brook that was that he looked young in there. He looked young in there against Khan. And I know it's against Khan and we can't get too excited, but Look, Khan can you know move. What? Talk you know what me. I'm going to say about Father Time. I know Father Time just turns up, bruv, but I think the clock's still... I thought Father, Father Time already knocked on his door in that Crawford fight. And look what happens to Father, Father Time. Father Time said, oh, you busy now, yeah? Uh, I'll show you later. <laughs> Go handle card and I'll show you. I'm just saying, man, it, it, uh, we, weirdly, and hope, don't get me wrong, I don't want to say I hope I'm wrong because I'm not Eubank Jr.'s biggest fan. I'm not. Look, I'm not. A loss to Kelbrook gets in the way of a Eubank Jr. world title. Yeah? I can't afford for that to happen. Not with what I know it's going to look like. <laughs> so, I'm not interested in it. Eubank, I'm, I'm telling you, Kel gets it done. Kel gets it done in the ninth round. He's not, no, no, sorry. Okay. If you say he wins ninth. on points, if ninth. he says he wins on points, then I'll let you get it off. Ninth. No one's knocking out Eubank Jr. I don't think he got. I think he goes his whole career without getting sparked out. You think so? I think I unless think, he fights Canelo. I think the ninth round. I think. Um, why do you say that with so much confidence that he's not getting knocked out? What I respect you, Ben Junior's chin, and and also as much for everything that you, Ben Junior, isn't one thing he is. Yeah, is a warrior when it comes to having heart and being able to keep going. What about a technical knockout? What do you mean? What is in like just four or five knockdowns in a round? Says you how like man ain't put, who's putting what I'm saying is putting Eubank Jr. down is a massive task, fam. All right. Do you know what I mean? And for everything that he isn't, one thing he is, he's a tough son of a gun, fam. He can take blows. Yeah, you might have a point in there. I think we struggled to get Khan. Khan didn't go down. He didn't land. He didn't. Go, they can't go down, down in that in that last fight. No, nope. he didn't, did he? That's the one more victory he left with. He said, you didn't put me down. for everything. You say I'm chinny. I didn't go down, though. Shit. But was that just a was that just a, a will to survive, a will to stay on your oh, feet type yeah. thing? Hell yeah. He goes, I'm, <laughs> he goes, I'm not getting knocked out by you. No way. That, uh, that's the one thing that you ain't getting. Yeah, because I know said, that. Beat me up. Beat me up if you want. <laughs> but you ain't, you ain't knocking me out, bro. I'm still saying Kel Brook to win. I'm still saying Kel Brook to... Even if the referee just gets involved and does that one, yeah, 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 yeah I still yeah, yeah. think like it will just go that way. I, don't, I, and there's a nut. The needle's good. Can Kel Kel needs to be up for the fight. Kel needs to have a reason to want to go to work. He's one of those fighters where if he's not, um, I don't know, like if he hasn't got something pushing him, he's not all the way in it. You bet. Would say you straight up. It's just another fight for me. Just another fight. But then he'd be like, yeah, there's a little bit of needle there. Yeah, absolutely. But it's just another fight. It's for him, for him, this is a great moment. Huge event. Yeah. Career defining. He goes, for me, it's Saturday. <laughs> for me, it's Saturday. And then you look into the camera, let's watch it. He goes, for me, it's Saturday. <laughs> what the... <laughs> you know what? Names. Go on. i got to say, though, yeah. Warrington's win over Martinez. Ah, oh, let's talk about it. For me, headbutts. 
Mm. That fight, like we said on the live, sponsored by Kokoda Mall and Ibuprofen. <laughs> because <laughs> the fact this man gets away with just an unleashed he- arsenal of headbutts. Yeah. Yeah. His headbutt game is so consistent. You know he does headbutts on the pads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 we're guaranteed. Yeah, so I'm guaranteed. like, I look at this and I think to myself, do you know what? We need to have a real conversation about referees in boxing. Like Talk to me. I had a chat, yeah. Uh, my friend David. Mm-hmm. Shouts out David fam. And um he was he had a good idea, a suggestion for how we can overhaul this thing. He goes, if all the big promoters in boxing, all right put let's say they put some money in a pot 200 grand each right and of that 200 grand each this pays to train up a whole new crop of refs i'm uh, sorry a whole new crop of referees and judges right and throughout this year you know say it's for example okay so let's say it works one year is training like that crop is being trained the year after that they're now into the mix right so that way you have a uh how can i describe it as a a system cohort, like a, a, a cohort a, of, of yeah new referees yeah chat like coming through now the next year these men are now into the field referees and judges a whole new batch are being trained as we speak so that way this thing keeps going because what's happening is that we've got the same names the same stale judges and refs just working and they're the same ones that and i'm like this needs to be broken up somehow the reason why that can't happen is I like it. I like the thought of it. But promoters are a part of when a decision changes. They are. But what so this you're is telling the promoter, No, because you're telling me to make it even playing field. And boxing is one thing that is not. It's not even. It's and not that's everyone's why. trying to get a... a er, like, look what... I'm telling you, on that night of Fury Dillian, there will be, there will be nonsense on both sides. But especially the A side. The A side can... Probably make sure that he comes out first. His dressing room ain't that ain't the most comfortable. Like they, they could do everything. But the problem is, yeah, and this is one thing he said. All these promoters kicked off about the robbery of the Jack Catterall and Taylor fight. Yeah. But no one did no one's done anything. Why should they? No, everybody said the same thing. Yeah, it's gotta change, it's gotta change. But no one's doing anything. There's no attempt at anything other than to say stuff, go quiet. And continue. It's posturing. And the, the British Boxing Board of Control get to continue with their cack-handed way of doing things. But they're all part of it, Trav. This is what I'm saying to you. It, it, it still benefits. If I put money in, how does that benefit me? When you bring a fighter that is, they're both on e- an even playing field, yeah? And then my fighter loses. But I put so much money into that fighter. He can't lose. And this but is what it comes is- down to. It comes down to who can sell tickets and who's the one most valuable. And that's where that's honestly where it comes down that. to. So but if you're at, gonna make it more at, even and that my fighter gets done over, now nah, I'm not interested in that. But if you're looking at what's happening now, where British boxing fighting over here is now seen as a uh, I ain't going over there. Ah, they're gonna rob me, they're gonna take my belts. That that's the reputation we're developing now. Yeah. So if we don't start this grassroots system of new judges, new refs, this thing is gonna get worse. Yeah, you know what I mean, and as much as people, everybody acts surprised. Somebody's not surprised by the judge's decision. But don't somebody, you... Mm. you know, what I'm saying. So, so it's like, like everything you're saying. The A side influence is still going to be there. Do you know what I mean? And I just think it's annoying because ju- no judges seem to be on the same page. Yeah. So it's like, what are we doing? And what is this system that we have? We can't actually call this a sport for every all intents and purposes of what a sport is supposed to be. Fair. Oh, it's not. It's never, and it's never. It never has been, and it never will be. That's one of the things I've I've just accepted about boxing. Is and remember, I started as the the ultimate casual in this thing. Now we we've been at fights. We'll be like, wait, how did how do you get the call? Like that. Yeah. You're like we're both sitting there. Draw, win. You know when you're like, no, this shouldn't be happening. And this and this happens across the world. Now the only thing is. The spotlight's on the UK because there's titles over in the UK and this, that, and, and, we're, run, and we're running boxing right now. We're running it. Because you would say, go to Vegas. It's not going to happen. It's not going to be your night. Home fighter over there, forget about it. You know, where this is, this is the only reason. I think this happens everywhere. 
this is a sport of boxing. The main thing I would say to people that are going to go up against this is knock him out. You have no choice. Knock him out. You ain't. You can't play these games. Like even if um, Ke- I had Kiko up on the scorecards in that in that. Um, what well, by the time of stoppage? Did you? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. Well, I was about that's to say lie. how. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. I was about to question you, that's fam. That's you that's dodgy judge, fam. That's a lie. <laughs> I, no, I had him win in the later rounds, though. All right, but okay. that's it. That's why I had him. I had him win in the later rounds, but I looked at the scorecards from like Bellew and all sorts. And it was like every round was warranting rounds. And even I was, I would be right to have him up because I would have given a points deduction for the headbutts anyway. He should have gone down. He should have been marked down. But even the referee at no point gave deductions for headbutting. Just a, just the occasional head tap, you know, mind the head. But he's done it to both sides. He's done it to both that sides. He told Chico, hey, stop it. He spoke to both of them. But this is the thing. This is what happens when the referee loses control of the fight. If you don't really like manage things properly early on, mm-hmm. you get nonsense. Because if I'm getting headbutted all night and you're not doing nothing about it, oh, something's coming back. I'm going to headbutt him or I'm going to crack him with a shoulder as he tries to headbutt me. Yeah. Something's happening to him. And I'm going to look at you. You're going to warn me and I'm going to say, do your job and I'll do mine. Yeah. Because that's what's happening. Fighters are coming into these fights, especially with the man that's with the reputation as Warrington now. I'm thinking, okay, cool. I'm coming in here to do dirty because mm. you're going to do dirty and you're going to get away with it. So at least I know I hurt you. Yeah. Well, that would be my mindset. Mm. Did you- you're not going to just mark my face up like that and I just lose because of this foolishness. Nah, because you hold that elbow then. Well, karma's, karma's everything in it because... He's now on the liquid diet now because he's got, I think he got a broken jaw still. So yeah, they both hurt each other. They both hurt each other that day and it's gone the way it's gone. Obviously, that's just the 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 um the, the toils of being a champion, right? Respect to... Rorton did some cool stuff in that fight. I will... Don't there's one thing I'll say. Let me, he did some let me good just, stuff in that gonna, fight. He did some yeah, good stuff in that I've fight. just spoken against him bare on the headbutt thing, but he was winning that fight. Do you know what I mean? I don't think he... But I, my my frustration from the headbutts goes back to the Lara fight, the second one. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't get that. We didn't yeah. get what that was going to be because you headbutted, my man. Yeah, 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 yeah. DQ'd your way out of that. Do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, respect respect to Warrington, isn't it? I, respect I'll, to Warrington, still. Respect to Warrington. I say that begrudgingly. I won't lie to you. I don't like people that cheat. I could, like, I know that he did good, but I didn't like the cheating. You know, mm-hmm. um, before we go and stuff, AJ fighting in um, Saudi Arabia, potentially. How do you feel about that? Do you know what? I actually don't feel any way about that. He's got, he fought in the dunes against Ruiz. Like, it's not even like it's brand new. So, for me, I'm like, eh. I saw Gareth A. Davis saying that, you know, Usyk should fight here. They should fight here so Usyk has the platform to speak out about the situation in Ukraine. And I'm like, oh, we do have short memories, don't we? Because we were at that fight and his anthem was booed so savagely I'm thinking to myself, he ain't going to want to come back here. Why would he be? He might not be the one that wants to come back. He's thinking, bro, pay me wherever the most money can be made. Wherever you say, AJ, we go there. Because one thing we do know is when that fight happens and the post-fight conversation happens, win or lose, Usyk gets on the mic and speaks about the situation in Ukraine, the world is listening. So 100%. you don't have to sell anyone that, oh, do it in London so you can do a nice speech. No, bro. That platform belongs to them, man, when they get that fight made. 100%. Especially if he does it. If he wins as well, you're listening. Because anyone that topples... Because if you take AJ out a second time... Back to back. There's no more to be said. After coming back from war. There's no more. There's no more to be said. But do you know what's so funny? I could imagine (laughs) you... This is how rubbish Bob Arab is. He could have a fighter that's beaten AJ twice and come back from war and still not know how to promote him. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do social media. You know, he's not, <laughs> he's not likable. <laughs> he doesn't tweet, you know. Fam. Inept is the word. Inept. At every level. No, um, I'm, I'm waiting for, again, we're just quickly on AJ. I am waiting for a bigger name to join the team. Yeah. Now that, and now that, uh, and this is, you know what I'm going to say? I believe, yeah, AJ or the team 
may have miscalculated Usyk's commitment to the war. Is that fair to say? Because as we in, did... as in, yeah, war was going on. We said he was in camp this whole time. Not just no, not like that. Like, but I believe that they thought to themselves, this fight is not our next fight. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This fight is not our next fight. That's why we got AJ talking cruddy to my man. Um, ah, oh, what is this heavyweight's name? It's gonna get Joe uh, Joyce. Joe Joyce. That's why we're getting AJ fight. Cause no one, you can't just tweet AJ and he responds. AJ is still quite. He's very clever in what yeah. he wants to do, right? Yeah. And he understands the power of his brand. He knows what age, he knows when AJ moves, the world is watching. He knows that, especially the boxing world. So Absolutely. he puts off that, he, he does that tweet to Joe Joyce. Because a Joe Joyce fight is still a good fight. We'd watch it. Yeah. Joe Joyce yeah. is still ranked as someone that is a, is a worthy opponent. It made sense. And that's when Angel was the guy. Now it's like, oh, Usyk is, is thinking about Usyk's going to camp. Now it's like you start to hear a name that is coming to join as a coach, is coming to join, which lets me know we never had this plan. We we wanted to have a few little warm-ups. And the warm-up, I was all behind the warm-up because I said, I think he needs a confidence fight before Usyk too. I think he needed that. Now that's not there. Now we got a, now we're actually, we got a scramble. We got to scramp because there's not long now. Now it's if they're right. looking for venues, we don't have long. They're saying June. Boy, do you know what? It's one of them ones now where it's like bloody hell. We just have to wait and see. I'm I'm so I'm almost numb <laughs> now. As to it can't be Angel Fernandez. It can't be. Until I see him walk to the ring with Angel Fernandez, I don't believe it's him. Look, bro. And there's a lot of time. We'll, we'll see, man. April, May, June. Because March, we're done. It's done now. That's nuts. To be ready and to unlearn all the mistakes that was made in the first one. This is crazy. Mm. I, that's all. That's, that's the feeling that I have. To unlearn everything that went wrong in the first one. Yeah. And for AJ to change his style, and you know Usyk's going to change. Usyk is fighting for something else other than he can't just turn up and be a Ukrainian that just lies down. It, now there's a message behind this thing. He's got. To, he's really got to make the country look good. No, I hate you. I hate you. He's already represented his country wonderfully. Like, oh, no. on the mate, yeah, yeah, he has. He's, but, he's done. But I'm saying... in. It's going to be a different type of fight, regardless of how this kitting goes and if we, you know, the trainer and all that type of stuff. Because the trainer might not even be enough to turn it around. The trainer might just be like, look, bruv, it's not enough time for me to make a difference. We can try some things and da 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 And it could just be a thing where it's like, bro, the game plan is the difference. Not necessarily what you know how to do in the boxing. The game plan, we're going to take it to him. We're going to go in there for absolute hell and we're going to go for war. So forget this boxing game plan and the cute stuff. We're going to go in there and see if he can take it when you do that. Because we're not going to be able to teach you how to box with him. So we're going to have to teach you how to make yourself a bully and be on smoke and catch him and try and get him out of there. What else can really be said to AJ? So you're saying you want AJ to go and finish it in, in I five want him rounds? To go on smoke. I want him to feel like it's a six-round fight. Yeah, within six. And, and roll the dice. Yeah, I, I, I really feel like roll the dice. Mike Tyson didn't go in there for 12 rounds of boxing. He went there for to, to get it done quick. And if you got it, Tyson to 10 or 11, it's a bit technical for Michael still. But at the same time, bro, I know who I am and I know what I'm on. So I got to be me in this fight. And I think that's what AJ has to do. Well, we've seen AJ. Oh, we'll, we've seen, hmm. I'll, well, I'll end it like this. I'll say we've seen AJ start to produce a more of a ruthless side or hmm. just in terms of from how his tweet game is. We saw the last thing that he did with the Will Smith picture, and you know, um, it's a bit probably a bit tongue in cheek, but it's a bit ruthless. He knows what's going on. For him to say, "Yeah, he took my advice," and da 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 da, it's funny, but it's it's on the it's on the nose, mm. isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So we've seen a new AJ all along. Even the some of the the Amir, the Amir Khan's wife one, 
That was a bit reckless. The I way wasn't even. I personally don't feel like looking into these tweets as a shift in AJ's character as a big thing. He's tweeted reckless before and still been a nice guy at the press conference. So mm. it doesn't necessarily mean that he's flipped a switch. I just think, like, it's one of the ones where I feel like he's actually really hard to work out mentally where he's at. Yeah. Almost the Will Smith type. <laughs> and, then, and then one day, whoa. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, what, yeah. Uh, Usyk inside too. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, like, I'm not obviously predicting that, but I'm just saying that would be a mad surprise. <laughs> but we'll see, bro. We'll, we'll see. see, man. Anyway, listen. Um, it's time to feed a podcast. I'm KG. I'm Travis J. Till next time, innit? Yo, people, thanks for watching the Undefeated Podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, leave a comment and all that good stuff, man. This is the place to be.